keep going for Brandon Washburn, everybody. Give it up for him, man. He's like the... Brandon's like the only guy that lives in his car and also has a DUI. <laughs> you know, that's like the only vibe. He does, he's fucking, I want to make it clear, comedian-wise, he's fucking killing it. Life-wise, really struggling, you guys. Uh, he's having a tough go of it. He's gonna power through. He's gonna be successful, I believe in him. The best part about Brandon is that he can just like, he can just park at Stanley Park and just be like, yeah, that's right, I have waterfront property. <laughs> yeah, maybe geez, that's right, waterfront, and four rooms. <laughs> all his different cars, that's crazy, man. Ernie fucking killing it, dude. That's awesome, man. Woo! Ernie's 19, that's fucking crazy. Let's give a round of hand for yeah. Ernie. Hey. Hey. Dude, I started stand-up comedy when I was 18 years old, and if I have any advice, it's just like, don't do it, man. <laughs> like, this, is, this is gonna take everything from you. This is... Sorry to start on a sad note. You guys knew me from high school. I used to have friends, man. <laughs> now I have Brendan. That's all I have. I have Washburn. That's it. That's it. I got a guy beside me being like, so are you gonna light my titties on fire? <laughs> I guess so. He's like, okay, what about bear mace? I've been bear mace before. I'm like, yeah, did it hurt? He's like, yeah, I still got her, though. I'm like, Jesus, Brennan. Dude, yeah, Ernie, that's fucking... You're like, a, you're like a 90s sitcom character now, man. Dude, it's fucking sick. It's like boy meets comedy. I don't know. Fucking... That was wild. You went and got your prostate checked. I've been having my prostate checked. Uh, this is like an overly personal story. It's weird because both of you know my mom. Uh, this is gonna make it even weirder. That's what's gonna make it fucked up. I had to, when I was like 17, I was a virgin then as well, dude. Yeah. Uh, did you do stand up before you lost your virginity? Yeah. Well, fucking same, man. <laughs> yeah. It does something to you. It's weird because everyone says like your first ev the example every comedian gives you is they're like the first time you do stand up is like the first time you had sex and I was like yeah, don't know about that like <laughs> going into both of these blind man the first time I had sex with a girl I was not like this is just like the open mics this is wild <laughs> this is so crazy it's weird as hell Ernie's watching we got a room of comics just going in uh, I had to go get. Uh, a, like a check when I was 17 years old. I had a lump like right here over a, a gland right there and I had to go in and for some reason my mom was there with me and it was like right beside my dick so I had to fully draw trowel in front of this doctor and the doctor like got down like with my mom like side by side <laughs> like just staring at this like my penis like right there like like she was like I'm not gonna say that actually never mind I don't want to make that example <laughs> That's a fucking weird one. But they're like right there. And the doctor was like, this could be like an STI infection. Are you sexually active? And my mom just went, and, I, and no joke, I felt the wind from her nose against my dick. I, I felt it against my dick and I was like, that's the closest I've come to a blowjob. And it's like, that's the closest I've come to getting hit like a head at this point. Yeah, I've had my dick sucked like twice now though, so <laughs> I can look at the pool. I mean, uh, I got, I got hammered drunk here as well, man. <laughs> I blacked out. I took, actually, was anyone here for the St. Patrick's Day show? Woo! <laughs> hey, all right, fucking cool. All right. Uh, yeah, I took Xanax, shrooms, and vodka. And what? Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, I, yeah, do I you like guys remember a from high school? Uh, yeah, too cool, I guess. Fuck it. Uh, he came. He gave me Xanax. It was crazy. I took, yeah, it was, I took Xanax, shrooms, and vodka. And, uh, do you guys know, like, when you, when you mix shrooms and ecstasy, I know it's called a, you get a Scooby snack, right? When you mix, like, acid and ecstasy, you get a hippie flip. Right? When you mix shrooms, Xanax, and vodka, you just get a, a public urination charge. That's all, that's all that happens. Nothing
everything's cool about it. Dude, I fucking, I blacked out, I fucking, ev I, everything was cool. That's what fucks me up too, is like, I blacked out, I black out so often, and I just, I always assume that I was like the bad guy when it happens too. I'll black out and I was like, I was probably a huge piece of shit. Cause usually what happens is, I would be so nice to someone that I fucking hate, and I will be so mean to the people I love. <laughs> yeah, like my last relationship, I blacked out, uh, and I came to, and uh, my girlfriend had blocked me on everything. <laughs> yeah! And I was like, what the fuck happened? Like, what the fuck? And then I got a text, and it was from her ex-boyfriend. He's like, we should hang out sometime. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. Lost a relationship. Found a friend. <laughs> no. I don't know, it fucks with me, it's weird. Like, I came through this blackout, and I was at a place where I was just like, alright, I gotta go on like an apology tour, I gotta say sorry to fucking everybody. And someone came up to me, uh, a comedian, uh, and, and she was like, do you remember what you said to me when you were blacked out? And I was like, oh yeah, I apologize, like, I didn't mean it, I was really fucked up, none of what I said was sincere. And she was like, no, you, you said I was beautiful. And I was like, oh! I didn't mean it. I was really. <laughs> I, I apologize. I think you're hideous. I, I can't believe I must have been fucked up. I would never say anything like that. They know who it is. <laughs> so it's, that's why you heard Brendan laughing so hard. It's because Brendan's like, I know who that was. That's what's fucking rough, dude. Fuck me. God damn it. I don't know. I think my worst blackout, without a doubt. Look, I need to make it clear. Like, I was so cool with this. I was fine with it. My la worst blackout was four months ago uh, when clubs started reopening. I blacked out and then I came to, like, I got lucid in the middle of having sex with someone I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Terrifying. Pretty fucking cool, too, you guys. <laughs> Cool, you can get a charge, you can find a beautiful woman. Do you know how uncomfortable it is to try and figure out who the girl you're sleeping with is without breaking your cover? Or you're just like, fuck yeah, you like that? Say my name, say my name. Okay, now say your name. Ah, Isabel, Isabel, very nice. nice. Uh, oh, you, oh, you like to be choked? Oh, you, oh, yeah, I can do that. Okay, uh, safe word is the bar we met at. <laughs> oh, the Roxy, the Roxy, okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, great, awesome. And a bunch of my friends, all right, I'm doing new material, so please, if you guys don't like something, you can, you can not like it. That's fine. I'm not gonna hold it against you, I'm trying shit out. One of my friends was just like, dude, that's like really fucked up. Like, you were assaulted, man. And I was like, no, I wasn't. Like, I was not assaulted. I was, I didn't, like, pass out. I blacked out. I came to, I was totally cool with it. And he's like, no, dude, that's fucked up. You were assaulted. And I was like, I wasn't. I know that as a fact. Because anyone who gets assaulted's first reaction when their assaulter leaves is not, yes! <laughs> you know? It's not you on the phone being like, yo, you're never gonna fucking believe who just assaulted me. <laughs> Dude, do you remember Isabel? <laughs> Isabel from the rock, she fucking assaulted me, yeah. You know? And that's scary. People are like, that must be really scary. I was like, yeah, that is like a little scary. I don't know. At first, it's scary. Like, you think it's scary. You think it's gonna be assault. And then you realize it's pretty cool. Like, ladies, it would be like if a guy in a trench coat, like, chased you down the street and then flashed it and you realize he just had Harry Styles tickets underneath it. <laughs> Alright, a bit of a stretch. I feel you. I'm gonna, you, guys, you guys were with me and then I was like, right? And you're like, Uh, I went through a breakup a little while ago. Uh, fucking got her, you guys. Fucking won. <laughs> what? See, oh wow, I'm about to explain how toxic I am. That's what I realized. That's what I'm about to be like, see, if you break their heart, you're the winner. <laughs> if you walk away from it and they text you last, you won. <laughs> Getting a lot of puzzled looks in here. Uh, a lot of you guys have good relationships, is what I'm understanding. I don't know where to go from this. I, I mean, I was dating a, I was dating a girl who was uh, six foot one. And I am not. <laughs> no, I didn't notice that. I, I fucking loved it. I didn't give a shit. I thought it was cool as hell. And dude, like, dating a six foot one girl is awesome. She was insecure about it. I thought it was cool as hell. Like, the first time I ever kissed her, it was like I was hitting a layup. I was just like, <laughs> like fucking, 
ruled. I had to take a running start to it. I thought it was awesome. I could tell she was insecure about it though, and that got to me. She was insecure about it because every time we posed for a photo, she suddenly got scoliosis. <laughs> no, anytime we came in, it would be her being like, alright, I'm ready, and then she would just turn into Quasimodo while she's just like, are you ready for the photo? I'd be like, yeah, let's take this real fast. <laughs> yeah. Also, because people see you, they don't expect, when you're like, uh, does any dude here ever dated a girl taller than them? <laughs> Sick! Alright! Alright, maybe try it out, man. Fuck it. Go to a volleyball game, find something. You know, nobody? All of you just, all of you... I like to pretend! You like to pretend? You like to pretend you were taller. Oh, I thought you meant you would pretend. That's like, you would like kiss your wife and be like, no, stand on these phone books. Like, put your high heels on. That's fucking awesome, man. What was your name? Brian. Brian? Yeah. Dude, you seem like just like a spark of life. <laughs> I'm so happy right now being here. This to you, this is great. <laughs> can't make fun of you now. That's just, that was like the nicest response you could have possibly given. You could have been like, yeah, I keep going short stuff, and I'd be like, it's on, baby. That was the nicest fucking response. I'm a nice heckler. Fuck you, dude. No, I don't, I don't know. That was wild. Dude, Brian, what do you do for work, man? I, I'm a graphic designer. You're a graphic designer? Cool. Awesome. Alright, and is this your girlfriend, wife? Girlfriend, yeah, I Yeah, she's pretty short. <laughs> yeah, she's rather short. Okay. I feel the scoliosis. What's that? I feel the scoliosis. <laughs> you got scoliosis going on with you? Cool, how'd you guys meet? One of our co workers. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just like, oh, I'm, this guy is available, you should go. <laughs> Is it that easy? <laughs> Damn, I feel like a fucking loser. Right? <laughs> no one's ever done that for me. Who are your coworkers? I need to find someone. <laughs> Is that how you guys met too, Laura? Coworker, yeah. What? What are you doing? What are you doing for work now? <laughs> Dude, you're dressed like Fresh Prince of Bel Air. This is wild. <laughs> you can't see her. She's she, the way you were dressed when you came in. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, oh, she's a lesbian now. All right. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm cool. Laura like, came out of the closet. That's awesome. No, he, like, if you're a lesbian, fucking keep eating pussy, you know? Like, do that. That's cool as hell. You guys met through coworkers or work? Yeah? Cool. She hired me. She hired you? <laughs> that feels like the start of a porno. I'm not gonna lie. I'm mean, like, let's see what your goods are. <laughs> Try this out. She hired you. What was the job? Uh, youth worker. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you knew what I was going to say. You knew what was coming. <laughs> Jesus. I can't even say it now. That feels like it's a curse if I say it out loud. You both thought it. You guys are youth workers. Shit, that's awesome. You'd be good at that. That's really cool. You'd suck, but I, I don't know. Uh, you seem like you're, you seem very jolly. Uh, you seem like a cool dude. What was your name, man? Nick. Nick? Am I hinting? Like, is there an accent on you? Yeah, I'm English, yeah. Oh, you're English? Yeah. Holy shit, your teeth are so straight, dude. <laughs> this is making no sense. You're like flipping on my head what I thought an English person was. That's wild. <laughs> Where are you from in England? I'm from Leeds, like Yorkshire. Yeah? <laughs> Yorkshire. <laughs> That's great. Dude, I used to work with teens. I worked with teens for like... For a minute, actually. I'm a, I'm a fucking idiot, though. I worked with a dude. <laughs> then I was like, this is fucked up, and I shouldn't say this out loud, so just take this home with you and never repeat it. Uh, I worked with, like, special needs kids for a while, and I didn't know that they were special needs when I first got hired. And I got brought into this, like, youth center, and I heard someone say the R word. Like, this one kid I was working with said the R word, so I was like, damn, and I went to a supervisor, and I was like, dude, Rebecca just said the R word, and she's like, yeah, she can say it, she has Down syndrome, and I was like, I'm gonna be honest, this whole time I just thought she was British. Because, <laughs> because like, British people and, like, Down syndrome people are kind of one and the same, are you not? 
Uh, like special needs kids, you're kind of sim- Dude, I could go up to any special needs child and a British guy and ask them what they had for breakfast, and the answer would overlap. <laughs> you know, I could just go up to them and be like, what'd you have for breakfast? And I'm like, I'll have beans for breakfast. <laughs> like, that is the most autistic shit I've ever heard. That is, dude. I cannot tell you where Liverpool is on the map. I can tell you where it is on the spectrum, man. That is, you are a high-functioning fella. That is why. All right. And everyone's phone was off for that? Good. Great. Awesome. Good. Awesome. Dude, I worked with... Yeah, fuck it. I'll go deep in. I worked with this... I worked with a special needs kid. And that's what people don't understand, especially with autistic kids, is some of them are wildly smart. Like, some autistic kids yeah. are, like, crazy fucking smart. Uh, but, yeah. Oh, are you autistic? Yeah. Oh, sorry, man. All right. <laughs> It's funny? Alright, perfect. Then this one's for you. Uh, some like autistic people are ah, dude, some were like so smart. There was one that I used to work with. I used to work with this kid. He was A, he was very smart. He was selective mute. He was nonverbal. Never spoke. Like could understand everything, just chose not to spoke to speak. So like when I would be paired with him, I would just whisper horrible things in his ear. <laughs> I won. It's perfect. His mom will just come up to me and be like, I heard you told my son, he told me that you were saying I was a whore. You're good. You're real good. He told me about it. He got him to speak. Also, because it's like, I can say horrible things and then if he speaks, everyone's like, Jesus. You know, like, right? I, he could just be in class. After having awful misinformation fed to them for years, and they'd just be like, How does it rain? Is it precipitation? And you'd be like, And they're like, What? What? And you'd be like, Is it precipitation? They're like, What is it? What is it? And like, it's the juice. And they're like, Alright, never say that again. Never. His first words, and it's hate speech. Don't ever repeat that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really know what to talk about at this point. <laughs> like, I've kind of burnt the bridges. I got a little sidetracked. You went like this, as in don't stop? Don't leave. Don't leave? Don't leave? <laughs> oh, actually, this one kind of fucked with me. Uh, yeah, oh, I was talking about tall, dating tall girls. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Dude, it fucked with me, man. It was weird as hell. Because people see you, they don't think... You know, when they see a short guy dating a tall girl, they don't think it's love. <laughs> right? They just think you're a millionaire. <laughs> Anytime someone saw me with my girlfriend, they'd be like, oh, he knows something about Bitcoin. Like, <laughs> he's schooled onto it. It's fucking crazy. It's also like, I always had old guys come up to me and they'd always see the same thing. They'd be like, oh, that must be like you're dating a supermodel. And I was like, yeah, lawless like dating a supermodel. A lot more like getting fucked by a WNBA player. <laughs> and she had huge hands with palm my penis, made me feel so small. <laughs> Horrifying it is when a girl comes up to you while you're intimate and is just like, fucking check up, son. Like, Jesus Christ. Look, have you ever tried 69ing someone and you just end up eating out their belly button? <laughs> I'm like, did you come? She's like, no, you blew a raspberry. I don't know. I don't know. But one of my friends, he was saying, because like I started seeing people recently, and he's just like, yeah, you know you're actually at a huge disadvantage. Uh, I read about this. This was in like a peer-reviewed study I read. Uh, because historically, women have been more attracted to mates that are taller, because back in the caveman era, they felt like they could be protected by a mate that was bigger. So you're actually at a huge disadvantage because girls aren't as interested in you because you're shorter. And I was like, oh yeah, did you read that? in a peer-reviewed study? Or did you hear that on the Joe Rogan experience? <laughs> you know? It's like, also, your peer-reviewed study where you're just like, yo, Gavin, does this check out? And he's like, that sounds about right. <laughs> That's, also, that sucks bullshit, because, like, I'm five foot seven. I have what it takes to protect a woman. You know? So to get them to come out on dates with me, I've just been lying about my height on dating apps. <laughs> and then they show up and they're like, wait, you're not six foot one? And I'm like, no, but don't worry. I do have a gun. I, I have a 
gun and I am willing to use it if I feel sit back down, sit back down. If I feel like you're in danger, do you understand? Do you understand? Are you feeling in danger right now? Do you feel in danger? You do. I'm making you feel like you're in danger. I'll fucking do it. I swear to God. <laughs> Uh, I've done that joke a few times before, and uh, depending on who I make eye contact with, the bit can go real strange uh, I mostly stared at you. I started the bit staring at this woman, and then I was like, I probably shouldn't be going like this to a girl in the audience. It's not really a good look, you know? Alright, uh, do you want me to do more? I don't really... I should fucking, I should leave on a laugh, you know? You know? Why not? <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. Good looking out, man. We're just new boot goofing up here. Just trying out some new stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll leave you guys after this one. Um, yeah, I've been trying to... I've been trying to meet people. Uh, and I'm happy clubs are back, but I'm also kind of... I don't know. I don't, like, approach people in public, you know? Like, I'm nerd. I've had Tinder since I was 17. That shit does stuff to your mind. <laughs> like, if I'm out in public now and I see a girl making eyes at me and being like, fucking come over here, I'm just like, man, I hope I find her on Bumble. <laughs> I go on, and I'm fucking, I'm terrified that I'm gonna come across as a creep because I've seen this happen so many times. I was at the Roxy before it shut down like a couple years ago, and I saw this like same guy just fucking go up to this group of girls and each time he'd go up to them and each time they'd be like, oh, I'm not interested and like walk away. And then the third time he just fucking like smeagled up to these women and just tried like latching onto them. And finally they had enough. They turned around, they pushed him and then he got hit in the chest and he nay-nayed out of it. <laughs> I was like, dude, how are you that fucking smooth? Like, I need to be like somewhere in between that, you know? Because like right now, I find if I'm in public, I'll hit on a girl like I'm a salesman at Best Buy. It'll just be me like... Oh, hurry. Oh, just looking? Okay, I'll be back here. I can't leave on that. that was, I know, I gotta amp it up. I gotta do like crowd work or something. Do you know Austin? Yeah. All right, never mind. Uh, I can't go in at Austin's friends. What's that? Oh, but I did. You saw that bit, but I made that up on the spot. I can't do that again. Rats! Oh, shoot. Damn, man, as a fan. All right, cool. It's nice that you watch my stand-up and my sister does not. It's, it is very funny. My sister does not watch any of my comedy. She's told me openly she doesn't like it. Uh, and it's always fun to be like, your friend Anna does, though. And she's, like, and she's like, yeah, Anna does say you're funny. That's correct. I grew up with you. I hate you. Uh, no, uh, I had a bunch of stuff on family and I purposely didn't do it because you know my family. And that'll be very strange when you're at my sister's wedding. You're just like, you know what Sean said about you? You're not invited? Are you serious? Man, fuck that bitch. All right, that's... 